<laughs> oh, that's just double oops right there. <laughs> Do you guys actively look for songs to dance to? For me, it's like a daily thing. Like I try yeah. to find music on the yeah. daily. Like for me, it's about like uh, the connection to the music. So like finding mu music is like super important because mm -hmm. then sometimes you find music that's cool, but I don't necessarily connect to it. Do you guys like gravitate towards certain types of songs, genres, artists? I feel like I go through phases. Whenever I'm inside of a phase, I try to be like, okay, let's just stay in this for as long <laughs> as I can. And then inspiration comes from somewhere else. And then it just kind of inspires the way I move. I keep bringing this up, but like connection to the music. So <laughs> like whatever kind of I'm feeling at my time or like during the time of my life I am in right now, I don't know what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even making any sense right now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, like I have to really connect to the song. So it could vary for sure. Like sometimes it's like slow or like R&B and then sometimes I'm just like, I just want to have mm. some fun. Did you always know how to create choreography right away? Or when did you start learning like your, what your process is and what works for you? Yeah, my first times were pretty bad too, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure there was Trust, trust me. Trust, trust. At least for me. <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think is the most important thing to keep in mind when you're creating choreography? I always say try to never say no hmm. so like no is like try not to give up on an idea just because it didn't look right the first time that's why I, like i sleep on things because like just kind of what i felt during my freestyle like yeah that's exactly what it should be but even though i'm trying to choreograph it like it's not exactly that so like mm -hmm. just never say no like just like all right i won't give up i'm not going to change it just because i can't figure it out and it leads to like you being more creative because you're like how do i do this like how do i like problem solving essentially yeah but i think most importantly just having fun like yeah. i know it's like super like cliche and I don't think you hear it enough but mm -hmm. just having fun with the process and enjoying it it has know? its ups and its downs yeah, yeah just like, gotta be in it how do you how do you make moves flow together because i struggle with that a lot too mm -hmm. when i first started creating connecting the dots and it's okay for things that look staccato sometimes mm -hmm. or very like choppy but then to have a, a blend just so like things connect pay attention to your textures um whether it be like, uh, cause you can make, I feel like anything can really kind of flow together, but how you, bl like, I keep using this word blend, but like blend things like um, with different textures can make your flow seem seamless. Mm -hmm. So less of like, um, so even if the move is like here and here, like you can change the texture instead of stick and stick, you can be like stick. What other challenges can you expect with creating choreography? Um, you're gonna not like the song you have to choreograph to. <laughs> Ooh. That's a big one. That's the that's the worst for me, honestly. Like, I, like connecting is so key. So when I have to choreograph something that's just off, I'm just like, ooh, this is yeah. weird. This is foreign, you know. But you're gonna be forced to create sometimes when you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Like you you may not physically or mentally want to have to choreograph for something, but you may have to teach something tomorrow yeah. or whatever that may be. Like to your friends or you know to your team. Like you may have to teach something so that stress can be a little tough mm -hmm. but like we said earlier like working under pressure can like mm -hmm. really like push out some of your greatest work so yeah. i normally don't create at like my parents house mm. um and i'm like i have no time <laughs> i didn't really prepare a week in advance mm -hmm. so right. like here we go yeah um and it's like i wouldn't say it's one of my favorites but i i really enjoy it Right. So um, you're saying your piece tomorrow is gonna be really great, and we should take it. Probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hear the listeners. Just don't give up. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. That's yeah. where you like don't actually grow mm. Mm. when you give up on something just because it's too difficult or too frustrating. If I could tell myself one thing is just be bold, be fearless in the way you create. Mm. Um, to just as simple as it sounds, not really take into account like what other people think. I think that I still tell myself that. No. <laughs> Until this day. Yeah, yeah. Until this I could day. tell myself. Every day. <laughs> Stay creative. I think it might be a bigger mm. one. Um, I think before, I used to be kind of like, I don't want to do this. I don't know how this is going to look. This, look, this looks kind of crazy. Like, I was almost afraid to do certain things because I felt like it looked weird or it looked okay. like different, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely think that'd be my note to myself. Note like, to yourself. Just do it. <laughs> just <laughs> just do be that. creative and do it, you know? Like, yeah. Um, and who cares about the repercussions? Because at least mm -hmm. you're trying. How did you get into K-pop? Because of like how popular YouTube is now, like we feel like it's been around forever, but then, you know, like it honestly like blew up like very recently, I feel, you know, like within the last like decade. And then 
I was just with my friend, Chi Fan, and she was like, do you know this song? And I was like, no, I don't, because it's not in English. And she's like, it's fine. Here, listen to it. And it was a song by Big Bang called Lies. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. And then even back then, I feel like YouTube, like, you know, like they have like the suggested stuff on the side. So like once I watched one, I was like, this is cool. Then I just kind of went down like the rabbit hole. Yep. <laughs> and I've been in it since then. Oh, yeah. So my first group was, um, I'm going to need to help with some names here. What was it? <laughs> um, SS. SS501. Yes, SS501. That was the first group that I like really got into because of uh, Boys Over Flowers. And then from then, I found out about Big Bang and then just um, all of the world. <laughs> yeah. For me, the first time I was exposed to K-pop, I pretty sure was um, the Wonder Girls Nobody video. That's, I feel like, where a lot of people kind of got exposed to it, you know? So explaining it to myself and maybe other people who are curious about it, what is K-pop? K-pop is literally like the shortened ver version of Korean pop music, right? Mm -hmm. But then I feel like it's not just pop music, even though like it's Korean pop music, it's like Korean like R&B, Korean rap, Korean indie music, like it's all under this giant umbrella. And then I feel like it's kind of hard to differentiate between like, oh, what makes like indie you know like k indie music k indie versus like k-pop indie music hmm. but i feel like that's something i still don't really fully know the difference between but then it's just kind of there and i feel like as an international fan it's not really a big thing we talk about here but i feel like koreans like talk about that a lot a k-pop idol can't just be like a good singer you know what i mean like they have to look good they have to be able to dance they have to be able to act they have to be able to be funny like mm. they have to be able to be like so much more things than just like the musical aspect. K-pop, like what is K-pop, right? It's kind of asking like, what is urban? <laughs> oh, God. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. So it's kind of hard to, to describe and define it really. Mm -hmm. It's a culture, it is uh, entertainment, it is a lifestyle even. I mean, speaking of artists, actually, I'm just kind of curious. What, what's your guys' favorite artist? I feel like since I'm still like into K-pop now, obviously, like a lot of my favorite groups are the current ones because they're active. Mm -hmm. You know, like Twice, Red Velvet, IU. Like, I'm very partial to female artists, but then that's just like personal taste. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love Big Bang. I do think it's interesting that the K-pop industry is very oversaturated. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like literally hundreds of new groups debut like each year but oh then like God. you know like five make it you know what i mean wow um if you guys if either of you guys are knowledgeable about this like what really was the catalyst to have k-pop explode for lack of a better word um was it a gradual thing or was there definite like moments where um at least to your to the best of your knowledge like where it really began to blow up. They come up with like catchy stuff and like, you know, their dances go viral, right. like viral in the Philippines, viral like yeah. everywhere. And then it's like, you know, everyone gets exposed to it that little bit. And then it's like, they kind of just mm -hmm. keep building off of that. Like nobody, you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, when I yeah, played yeah. that song for Erica, she's like, I know this song. I didn't even know it was like a K-pop group. I was oh, like, yeah, wow. like everyone knows this song. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's like, but you don't realize like where you know it from. I actually kind of wanted to play a little mini game and I'm actually curious, oh. um, how many of these dances that you actually know? <laughs> so I'm gonna go down this list that we got from our Instagram followers, okay? G, Girls' Generation. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry, I was gonna do it. <laughs> like, I wanna oh, do yeah. it so bad. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Boombaya. By Blackpink, yeah. By Blackpink. Nope. <laughs> gotcha. XO, Growl. Nope. Yeah. All my era. Sorry, Sorry mm. by Super, Super Junior. Junior. <laughs> I answer these questions. Uh, Cause they're like very yeah. our age. Um, Wonder Girls, like this, yeah. No. And Wonder Girls, Be My Baby. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> the dance cover terminology is like kind of a new thing. So if you had to define what a dance cover is, what is it? Like it's very literally like a cover or a copy of a dance, right? I guess nowadays that's very, that's like a really big thing in K-pop because let's say a group is selling a song, like they're not just selling like the musical aspect, like they're mm -hmm. selling, you know, like I said earlier, like the visual, like, you know, the clothing, like the dance, like the dance is a way for them to sell the song. Like say the songs, you know, not that popular, but the dance is popular. They're gonna like copy it and then it's gonna like spread throughout. I feel like it goes back to like the user created content thing. Yeah. Not that it's so easy for people to like post, you know, whatever they want. A way to show that like you're a real fan or like I yeah, have respect for them is to 
cover their dance, you know, and post yourself doing it. And it's interesting because it's encouraged over there. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just over here in America that we're doing cover classes. Like, in Korea itself, there's cover classes. Right. Yeah, and it's like not even taught by the choreographer, which mm -hmm. I think is what's interesting because it's like, you know, over here, it's like, we can't copy like someone's choreography. And yeah. you know, like it's, it's, it's not right. Mm -hmm. But then it's, it's different over there because they want that to happen. You know, like mm -hmm. whenever a group releases a song, they usually release like a dance cover challenge. If anyone has ever learned or, or as ever of thinking about learning a K-pop cover, like definitely do one. It's pretty fun <laughs> to do. <laughs> uh, connection is the big word that I'm hearing a lot is that it's just another, like the dance itself is just another way to connect with this artist yeah. and stuff, which we actually talked about a little bit connecting to the music in a previous podcast that we um, did, um, which you guys can check out on Spotify <laughs> and Apple Podcasts. I asked one of my students who's like actually a really good dancer who I know like knows it. Mm -hmm. And then she comes to take class and I'm like, why are you here? She's like, oh, like I kind of just like enjoy like dancing with everyone. And then she's like, and I like like being taught it because it's different when someone's teaching me like versus me like learning it by myself. For us here at All One Studios, we started our K-pop program to bridge these communities. Like just really wanting to like have people understand and just kind of be under one roof and say, hey, let's dance and like, mm -hmm. let's just have fun, you know? We have another class that's offered called K-pop Choreo, which is like original choreography, which mm -hmm. is gonna be, it's the perfect bridge, you know, for yeah. both communities to be like, okay, this is a place where it's like the music that I love, a dance that I can learn and have fun with and things like that. And that's what our big mission is. If you think about it, like people cover songs all the time. Yeah. Like vocalists, they pick a song, they learn it, then they record it and post it on YouTube. Really mm -hmm. shows like their skills, you know, mm -hmm. like obviously they connect to the song, they arrange, you know, they sometimes they even play it themselves, the song itself. And like, yeah. that's a cover. So same here mm -hmm. is like where, you as a dancer want to showcase your skills and want to show like you know this choreography which i think in, in in that mindset like i think is a great choreography i think i can pull it off with my skills and mm -hmm. like here it is you know what i mean like if there is resistance to it because there's a lack of understanding why people would do it you just have to step back and like look at it in a different perspective like what if this was a music studio a vocal like you know and we offered vocal lessons you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then we had okay friday nights we're gonna do covers you know what i mean mm -hmm. like and the, here you're gonna let's do a michael jackson night let's do i don't know Be beyonce night you know and mm -hmm. then you just do covers that night it's essentially the same thing you're just doing what you love and we never like really disrespect who the choreographer is mm -hmm. like it's it's mm -hmm. it's we never say it's our choreography you know mm -hmm. this is it's given that this is a cover so i think as long as the respect is there yeah. then like and it's clear to people i think um there really shouldn't be any resistance regarding it one thing i want to say too is like for the urban dancers out there who are hesitant to take k-pop or not hesitant but like they don't they're indifferent about it or they don't see it as a kind of a class where you you can level up almost mm -hmm. um i feel like k-pop in its truest form is like the choreography obviously is choreographed by like our well-known choreographers like it's hard mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like going to a k-pop dance cover class it's like and being able to do it well mm -hmm. like execute it well that's the challenge oh, you know yeah. so it's like it's not even about just like oh i'm learning a k-pop cover that's on youtube like it's about like applying the skills that you've learned and executing it well I'll start with with you richard about dance and dating yeah general thoughts first i guess i mean i think it's just like anything you tend to be attracted to people that you're around pretty often so i think dance and dating makes sense it does get a little complicated because you know everyone's around everyone so everyone's attracted to everyone and then it gets, <laughs> it gets really sticky if you're on the same dance team and stuff like that but oh, yeah yeah it can be a little more dramatic because you know it's not like the professional world where there's these unspoken rules right it's mm -hmm. just like a free-for-all out there so i've i've been no stranger to a dating app and <laughs> things like that but for me and additionally like if i think this generation well yeah, <laughs> yeah this generation for me right now like every time i 
um, see a dancer on any of those dating apps, and I've seen a lot of dancers on there. <laughs> so an automatic left, like, nope, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> because interesting. I've, yeah, like I, I swiped right a couple times in the past, and it just it's super awkward working the front desk, and you're just like, mm, that's why. That's when when you're around dancers for so long, you already have that connection, so it's like so much easier to do it within that community. realm mm -hmm. right and then when you go outside of it like you i feel like it's like being in that dance world versus like outside of that dance world once you start i guess exploring outside of that dance world it's like you're like wait a minute like right, you what do we talk about interests. yeah like so and so like dance is still on your mind where you're like mm -hmm. do i tell this person i dance do i like <laughs> well, do i have to explain what i'm doing you know <laughs> like it's that it's it's just something that goes through your mind every time that um at least when every time I go on a date, and so it's like, uh, right. do I say I'm a dancer? Mm -hmm. Like, do I have to? That's what most people, I think some people think about is like, okay, if I'm going, go out there in the dance community and, you know, experience dating and stuff, then, you know, the repercussions are like, if it doesn't work out, then we're going to be around each other. Because the community is so small, it right? Is. Yeah. Saturday alone, the yeah. dance community is so small. So it's kind of like, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. what are you guys thoughts about that? Oh my god, speaking of small communities, the gay dance community is even like <laughs> smaller. <laughs> it's like every time I follow some some new gay dancer and stuff, it's like I look at the mutuals, it's all the other gay dancers. <laughs> it's like what <laughs> like dude. Or sometimes it's kinda of funny. That's like my like that's how I gauge like, oh you are gay, because it's like you follow all the other gay guys. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Maybe two questions. <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who wants to attract another person using dance? Is there a mating call? <laughs> so I heard if you do the whoa enough times, <laughs> it'll work. So just, just keep going every day. <laughs> That's a mating call. <laughs> How do you balance your love life? You don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh oh. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> I think we do talk about dance pretty often, um, just in relationships in general, dating a dancer. Um, and like I said before, one of the complications is that it gets very easily sucked into just talking about dance right. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I fully agree with you about, I think it's not necessarily important to me to date someone who's necessarily a dancer, but I would love to date someone that has a certain passion for something, whether it be arts or not. Mm -hmm. um, because I think at the end of the day, the language that we would share is not, it doesn't have to be dance. It's mm -hmm. just understanding what passion does mm -hmm. for each of us. I like that. Because at that point, our actions towards what passion we're pursuing makes sense to the partner. Mm -hmm. And then the partner is able to full heartedly support because they understand the kind of passion that their partner is. Mm -hmm. It's tough if all you've known is the dance community your whole life because right. then like your only friends are in the dance community. Right. And I would actually encourage people to venture out, not necessarily dating either, but just venture out and try to meet new people. And if it turns into dating, great. But you'll realize that there's a whole world out there outside of dance. Have you guys ever experienced where you had to decide like how much time you need to invest in dance versus how much time you need to invest in something else? I think for me, it's probably a lot of the experience that a lot of dancers share, but it was picking between college and between dance. Mm. Um, uh. Being a dancer that didn't start until he went to school, a lot of times because we would have late rehearsals, practicing for you know bridge or prelude NorCal, um, a lot of times it boiled down to would I want to pick academics or would I want to pick dance? And so I came across that a lot and I'm sure a lot of people do especially more recently like understanding that having the time versus like having the mental capacity to do it is like completely different yeah. right so and then i basically sacrificed a lot of time for myself like self-care and stuff right. so exactly. um that's where i started to have to like start to make compromises a little bit think, like i think of it like a cup i never want to fill it to the brim you know what i mean like 24 hours yeah but then when you get a cup of water you never fill it to the brim it's all brim it's always like this much free mm -hmm. and because you need that to be able to even enjoy your drink before we actually get into the discussion um just a disclaimer out there like we're not at all experts at this topic um sure we have a lot of ex life experiences and we want to share those but you know we're still struggling we don't have our ish together yeah <laughs> so um take this take our advice with a grain of salt you know do what works for you um, hopefully you take something out of this episode, but again, we are not at all experts. <laughs> so 
it's gonna be tough, y'all. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be tough. tough. Don't right. be hard on yourself because I know when we talk about this, we might make it seem like we're making it look super easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's really not. We're still struggling, like you said. Yep. So we're in it together. Woohoo! <laughs> it's a huge struggle kind of deviating from what society deems as the normal path because you are surrounded by people that are going that way and it seems like they're so successful, why am I not? And what I learned is that everyone has their own timeline. Everyone figures out what they want for themselves and just because you see people that graduated in four years have a full-time job now, it doesn't mean they've figured it out for themselves either. You could very much be happier than some other people because you took the extra time to take a little detour and understand for yourself why exactly you are doing the things you're doing as opposed mm -hmm. to doing it because you believe society asks that of you. For me, it was really just organizing it almost. Mm -hmm. Like just like where, what day even throughout this whole lump of commitments, can I even just take the time to breathe? And I always found it was like, two, it, you know what's weird? It's like, it's always been Tuesday. I don't know why, <laughs> it's just always <laughs> been Tuesday, uh -huh. like for seven years now. But like Tuesday has always been my kind of my, my chill day. It's not always just gonna be a yes, yes, yes all the time. Even including like work, it's like, can you come in? It's like, I really can't. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I already put in my, at the time, 25 to 30 hours mm -hmm. that week. I was like, I can't come in to cover. If you haven't given someone advice already, what oh, is your advice? Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Turn to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel like you are having a hard time multitasking, I feel like sometimes it might help to reevaluate why you're doing the things you're doing. And what I mean by that is to really understand the why. Mm -hmm. I find that people tend to overwhelm themselves doing things that they think they should be doing. But when you sit down and ask them, why are you doing that? It's more like a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel obligated to do it, but it doesn't necessarily bring me any joy, you know, mm -hmm. or anything like that. And so I think if you ask yourself the why, it becomes easier to start prioritizing what is important to you. Mm -hmm. And once you're able to do that, and once you're maybe able to, as a result, filter out things that don't bring you joy, you will have more time, which will make it a lot more fulfilling. This is Between Us Foods. We'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs>